everybody. Here we are all ready to take you down to Pine Ridge for another visit with Lum and Abner. Brought to you by the makers of Horlicks, the original malted milk. Have you sent for your autographed picture of Lum and Abner yet? If you haven't, you certainly want to. This big 8x10 picture shows your old friends both of as they really are and as they appear in character. No one should miss getting one. They're just the thing for completing that album of yours or for framing and showing to all your friends. And you're certainly going to get a surprise if you've not yet seen the real Lum and Abner. You'll never believe that the good-looking men at the top of the picture are one and the same as the quaint old Pine Ridge philosophers. Here's all you have to do to get one of these pictures. Just write your name and address on the back of a wrapper from a half-pound or larger size package of Horlick's malted milk. Then send your wrapper to Lum and Abner, care of the station to which you are now listening, and you'll get your picture right away. But don't forget that there is only a limited number of these pictures, and the offer will be withdrawn soon. And now, let's see what's happening down in Pine Ridge. Since Squire Skimp has taken Lum and Abner's hogs to Chicago to sell for them, the old fellows have decided to use part of the money to have a large statue made of themselves to present to the citizens of Pine Ridge. Lum has been dickering with Caleb Weehunt, the local blacksmith, on having the statue made. <laughs> As we look in on Pine Ridge today, we find Lum down at the Jotham Down store, and Abner is just entering. Listen. Well, where you been, Abner? You have been gone over an hour now. I've been down to the blacksmith shop talking to Caleb about that statuary. I about made up my mind to stay out of that statuary, Lom, just let you make one of you in the hall. What's the matter now? Well, Caleb admits yourself, and he don't believe he can make nothing out of concrete that'll look like it. I don't see no sense in putting up a statue where nobody won't know what it is. Well, I believe I've got a new idea on that now, Abner. See, I got a catalog here from that monument maker in there at the county seat. Monument? Yeah. I know I don't want no monument made up, man. Not while I'm living, anyway. I never said nothing about having a monument made. I said the catalog was from the monument man in there. He can order a statuary first. See, here's a whole catalog full of them. Uh, have they got some in there of us? No, of course not. But I was just glancing through here. I believe we can just order one of these and get the monument man in there to change the faces on them and... Put some different kind of reading at the bottom of them there. Different kind of reading? Well, yeah, like this in here. It says, uh, the end of the trail. See, that's an Indian sitting there on his horse. Now, that's the end of the trail, all right. That horse looks sick. He couldn't have gone another foot long. You can tell that by looking at him. Well, see, now, if I was going to order this one for myself, I could uh, get that monument maker to put on there, Lum Edwards, a uh, horseback rider or something like that. He'd just change it up. Well, I thought you wanted me and the hog in there with you. Oh, I ain't going to order this. No, I just said if we was. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, if I, if I was just trying to find one for myself, it'd be plumb easy. See, here's one right here. I'd just give my right arm to have. What's in that? Nothing there. Well, I know him. Yeah, I know. I saw him coming. No, I mean, you never ever saw that man. Yes, I have too, Lon. He must have lived around here summer for that. I saw that face a thousand times. I never forget a face. I can't call his name, but I know I saw that man before. Yeah, yeah, you saw him, but you don't know him, Abner. That's Abraham Lincoln, who that is. Oh, yeah, sure, yeah, that's who it is. <laughs> I know that face was familiar. See, I wouldn't have to change his face up hardly at all. Just chisel him side whiskers off of him and then down on his chin and put a mustache on him, and there I'd be. I've always said me and him looked enough alike to be own blood kin. Yeah, I know that you do. You sure do. Uh, except in the face. Uh, he always did put me in mind of myself some way or other. Abraham Lincoln did. Great man, Mr. Lincoln. No wonder they call him the father of our country. Well, for the land, is, is them second-hand monuments that they're selling there long? Second-hand? Yeah. Well, they're not. <laughs> Look at them prices there, and you won't think they're second-hand. Well, who in the world would want to buy that thing all broke up like that then? What? That's there. Uh, Oh, yeah. well, that's Venus. Her arms are supposed to be broke off like that. Well, don't get nothing like that, Mom. I want myself to be in good shape. I know that. Reckon how she got all crippled up that way. I don't know. I ain't never heard the story of her life. Poor thing. Poor little thing. 
There's one that I like that look so about as well as any. I was just looking at that one when you come in just now. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. And that's called the uh, Spirit of 76. That's uh, what Lindbergh blew across the ocean. Oh. No, that's the Spirit of St. Louis. Uh, see, these are soldiers. Well, we ain't soldiers, Long. Well, no, but <laughs> folks a hundred years from now won't know where we was or not. See, that uh, statuary there is going to be here for a long time after we're gone. Yeah, but that, that monument he may, ain't got no hog on it, Long. No, that's... That's what stumped me right there. I'd have figured it out some way around that. And it's got one too many men in it, too. We don't need that now on the end with that stick in his mouth there. Uh. Stick in his mouth? Yeah, that one right there. That ain't no stick. That's a piccolo or a trombone or something. He's playing that for the rest of them to march by. Oh. See, he was the one I was figuring on for you. Me? Yeah. Well, I'd rather be that than on this side there playing a drum line. That's what I like to draw. Well, <laughs> he's just a little boy, Abner. You wouldn't want to be him. Well, you said that monument fella's going to change their faces anyway. Then we put some chin whiskers and a pair of spectacles on him. Why, he wouldn't look like no little boy. You never seen no little boy that age with chin whiskers long. Well, Abner, I wanted to be the man there in the middle playing the drum myself. We won't go on two drummers. That's the reason I picked this fellow over here playing the piccolo for you. Well, now, you're just wasting your time, Lom. I ain't going to be him. In the first place, I don't know how to play one of them things. Well, you don't have to play it. The whole thing's made out of concrete. You couldn't play it if you wanted to. Well, if I ain't going to play on it, well, what's the use of having it in there, then? Well, we can take the piccolo out of it, then. Yeah, uh, that ain't going to look right. Yeah. My hands will still be up there. Folks will be wondering what I'm doing. Another thing, he's got his head all bandaged up there. Looks like he's got a splitting headache. Oh, no, he's been shot in the head. That's the reason for that bandage. Well, I know I don't want to be him, man. Well, but... all right, then. You can be the little boy. I'll be him. You both can't be playing the drums. I know that. Well, uh, Lom, what are you going to do with that fella there? That in the middle here. Well, I don't know. If that was a hog you was carrying there, instead of a drum, we could call him John Doe. As Lum Eddard, John Doe, and Abner Peabody, the hog king. Well, uh, would he help us pay for it? Who? That John Doe, whoever is, if he's going to be in it, you ought to pay his part. Well, Abner, there ain't no such person as John Doe. Oh, he just made that name up, huh? No, no, it's a name you always use in legal matters. Use that shit of folks' real name, you know. Uh Uh-huh. Well, what is his real name? Who? That fella there that you was going to call John Doe. I don't know what his name is. I don't reckon he's got none. I don't know none of them fellas' names. Why, that's that and Peabody right there, don't you know? <laughs> and that and you. Well, them ain't the ones that's bothering me, though. It's that fella in the middle. What are we going to do with him? Well, we might get Dick Huddleston or Grandpappy Spears to go in with us on the statuary and pay their part and call that one of them. Well, they ain't Hogkins, though, Abner. Well, is that fella John or whatever his name is? Is he one? John Doe? Yeah, is he a Hogkins? Well, he's anything you want to call him. Well, let's just call him the hog gang. No, that wouldn't look right to have a hog playing up there playing a the drum. Besides, I'm going to be playing a drum, too. It might get us mixed up. Uh, yeah. Well, I'm going to see if that monument man could take and just cut him clean out of there and set a hog in there, Twisted. Well, now, what about them others? Ain't, ain't, ain't uh, none of them others in there that'll do? No, I've looked through it. Most of them are single fellas, or just one of them. Well, yeah. look here there. That's the ugliest woman I ever seen in my life. Who's she, Lom? Where? That and stand there barefooted with that ribbon tied around her head. <laughs> that ain't no woman. That ain't even a ribbon around his head. That's a wreath of leaves of some kind. That's Julius Caesar. See his name down there? Well, what's he wearing that dress for then? That's the way the men dressed in them days. Well, a uh, big sissy. Sissy? Yeah. Well, yeah. he was one of the greatest fighters of all time. He was a great warrior. I can whip anybody that wears a dress and a ribbon around his head. I don't care when he lives. Look at him standing there reading that newspaper. Newspaper? Yeah. Ain't no newspaper. <laughs> they never even had newspapers in them days. That's a scroll, a letter. That's the way they sent their mail in them days. Oh. <laughs> and some expression on his face there, Lord, that must be one of them chain letters. <laughs> More likely they got one back without no dime in it. <laughs> well, that's more than likely a legal document of some kind. That's another thing, Abner. If we're going to be hog kings, we ought to have a crown of some kind. Oh, of I work. believe that's all right, Mom. Yeah, I'll answer. More than likely for me, anyway. Hey, here, mm-hmm. let me have that cantaloupe while you're talking. Yeah. Hello? Fine, one. You got them down, store. 
Oh, well, this is him a-talking. Who? Chicago. Yes, Mom, I'll pay for it. Hmm. Chicago calling collect. Well, what do you know about that? <laughs> you mean the whole town's calling it? No, I've got ideas to square Kim. Maybe he's oh. got some news about the hall. <laughs> uh, yes, Mom? Hello? Squire? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Why, well, just fine. How's yourself? How's the weather way up there? Well, I, I can hear you just as well as if you're next door here. <laughs> uh, have you sold the hogs yet? It, it is. Hmm. Says the market flooded up there. Well, I just said them rains is going to cause some damage. Well, what do you aim to do, Squire? Be about our luck for the whole bunch to get drowned. Well, I don't know what to tell you, Squire. Just go ahead and use your own judgment, I reckon. Yeah, I know it's bound to be running into a lot of money. Well, let us hear from you the minute you make a deal, Squire. The whole town's anxious to know what you get from and all. Oh, yeah. All right, Squire, I will. <laughs> all right, much obliged for calling. Goodbye. Well, maybe we better sort of hold off on that statuary, Abner, until we find out what Squire gets for them hogs. He says he can't sell them, and he's having to buy feed from them and pay rent for a place to keep them. Oh, my goodness. That's just going to ruin us, Lon. Him spending all that money, we won't have nothing left. Oh, well, wait, wait a minute, baby. Huh? Squire, ring again. You don't reckon he sold them already, do you? Oh. Hello? He said, got them down, store. Mom? Oh, all right. All right. Thank you, Mom. What's the matter, Lon? That phone call was $18.36. Put the book up, Abner. I don't even want to see it. Well, this report from Squire's camp looks like a setback to Lum and Abner's plans for a statue. Before we leave the air tonight, I'm going to answer a few questions I've received lately about the Horlick weight control plan. Question. How is it that Horlick's malted milk, which is such a fine bodybuilding food, can actually help anyone reduce? Answer. The Horlick weight control plan consists of substituting a glass full of Horlick's for a heavy, hard-to-digest meal. That means a reduction of the daily caloric intake with a consequent loss of weight over a period of time. Question. Can you give me any instance in which the plan was actually tested? Answer. Yes, among a group of Chicago women. It was found after a period of only 10 days that the great majority of the women had lost on an average 3 pounds, 4 ounces each. Question. Why is the Horlick plan so much safer than many radical reducing plans? Answer. Because Horlicks supplies the essential food elements the body requires, it is extremely nourishing and easy to digest, is sustaining, and safely takes the place of a heavier, hard-to-digest lunch. And now, a word about that autographed picture of Lum and Abner. Don't forget that we have only a limited quantity of these pictures, and the offer will be withdrawn soon. So write your name and address on the back of a wrapper from a half-pound or larger size package of Horlicks malted milk. Send it to Lum and Abner, care of the station to which you are now listening, and they'll send you a picture right away. This is Carson Brickert, speaking for Lum and Abner and Horace, who now bid you all good night and good health. <laughs> <laughs>